Hey everybody, this is Beth Wilson, Pulaski County Horticulture Agent. And behind me, uh, I've got my small little apple orchard. Um, all, I get a lot of questions about apples this time of year, um, especially just for the home gardener. And I wanted to highlight a couple of things. Um, first of all, ID 21, Disease and Insect Control Programs for Homegrown Fruit in Kentucky is a resource you should have. If you don't have it, get online and look for it. Uh, on the first page, it just kind of goes over some general stuff. On the second page, though, it's very important, is this disease-resistant apple cultivars. Uh, the only thing I have in this little orchard of mine is disease-resistant apples, because I don't want to spray over my head. Um, I have a phobia about that, and I just don't want to do it. Um, so, you've got a very extensive list of some apples worth trying at home because of their disease resistance. So let's talk about some of these diseases that apples get. Um, they, it's very hard to grow apples organically in Kentucky. We have quite a few diseases that do bother our apple trees. Um, we've got fire blight, cedar apple rust, and apple scab. Now at this point, with the trees already in bloom right now, uh, it's going to be very hard to control fire blight with a spray. You'll have to prune it out either during the season or probably as a winter pruning. Uh, but the other two diseases, apple scab and cedar apple, cedar apple rust, you still have a good shot of getting some disease control on those. Um, on this list of the disease resistant apples, it does show the relative resistance to each of these diseases beside each of the apple cultivars. So that's a good reference to have. It's on page two of that ID21. The other thing you want to take a look at on diseases is your re-entry intervals and your pre-harvest intervals. Uh, so on, uh, on page seven, they have the different uh, products that are available for use on apples and, and other fruit trees and that how many days before you can harvest that. For example, under apple, um, if you use something like Immunox, um, you have to wait 90 days before uh, to spray before you harvest. Um, and then one of the most important tables that are available is on page 12. And it's basically in table format. It's the time of their, your plant stage and then what you're spraying for and then the products that are available. And these are available for each of the fruit. This is apples and pears. There's a peaches and other palm fruits. There's grapes and there's blueberries and blackberries and raspberries. So this ID21 is extremely important for the home gardener. And so since most of my questions are on apples and peaches, um, what they've done, what UK specialists have done is actually pulled out um, the tables that were in ID 21 and put them in a separate publication so you can read them more easily and that kind of thing. So this is the one, uh, it's called Simplified Backyard Apple and Pear Spray Guide. And the other one is, ta-da, Simplified Backyard Peach and Stone Fruit Spray Guide. So you can find those at the College of Ag, UK College of Ag homepage. If you type in Simplified Spray Guide, these two should come up. Um, this is the number one question I get is what to spray. I will tell you that the sprays that we have to control these diseases are very good. The problem that you and I have as backyard apple growers is coverage. It's very hard to get good coverage on a tree this size when you're trying to get every leaf surface every twig surface and every fruit surface. So keep that in mind when you're going out spraying. And I wish you the best of luck uh, growing your apples this year. They could be a very tough crop, but very enjoyable once you do get a crop uh, of your own. Just a note about what you see in this guide. Um, the label is the law and the label always takes precedence over anything that's in this spray guide.